I'm here to give God some praise. Acceptance, sure we'll find it here. Authenticity in this atmosphere. Anticipation with a lot of action. We take it so far. Welcome to the lighthouse, lighthouse. Let me introduce you to my father. Welcome to the lighthouse, lighthouse. His name is Jesus the Christ. Let me introduce you to my father. I believe that we owe God a praise. What's up, family? A hey, Pastor Torrance here, and I am on Take Action with Pastor Keon. Listen, I'm honored to be here. And you know your boy. When I get on here and do get opportunity to do anything with the lighthouse, communicating anything that the Lord has given me with you, I'm excited about it. Listen, today, the Reverend gave up his seat. You see, I'm sitting here. Like the Reverend gave up his seat for a few minutes. I don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's about to be crazy. But we're going to talk today. And I love having conversation because you understand conversation is essential to moving things forward. You got to talk if you want to get progress. So today, I got a special topic for you. And if you give me your ears just for a few minutes, hopefully the Lord will prick your heart and you'll walk away with something that the Lord intended for you to have. Today, I want to talk to your heart. I come to do a little EKG on this thing because I'm going to come from a topic today, heart check. Listen, go to the word with me in Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Go to the word with me. And we're going to read this. Now, when you look at Proverbs 4, it's a wisdom text. But I want to come from Proverbs 4, 20 through mm, 27. I'm going to read a few scriptures with you because I want you to really catch what I'm seeing, what I'm saying. This, the, the essential of this text is wisdom and how we should gain it and how we should lift wisdom up because it will direct our steps. But when we get down to verse 20, it says, my son, oh, it's landed in your lap now. My son, give attention to my words. Oh, you already know when somebody start off like that, they want you to hear something. It says, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. And put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. And your eyelids look right before you. Put the path of your feet. And let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Listen. That's a whole lot of wisdom that got through at us. But I want you to understand something is that if we don't gain wisdom, then you miss life in its totality. Because wisdom has been given to us to direct our steps in the earth so that we can reach our full potential in God. Knowledge is great. I have to learn things. I have to study things. I have to read things. I have to ingest things. But wisdom helps me digest. Knowledge I ingest, wisdom I digest it. Because once I digest it, then wisdom helps me to apply the correct application to the knowledge I receive. I love knowledge. I love to learn new things. But without wisdom, how do I operate in those new things? It's the essential part of life. That if we're going to capture what God has for us, we're going to need wisdom. You need wisdom in every part of your life. You need wisdom in your relationships. You need wisdom to deal with people on your job. You need wisdom to be a church member. Oh, my God. Because when you come to church, 
Everybody in the church not saved yet. Some of, some of them are still dealing with issues and they're still rough. And when you rub up against them, you take more damage than you give love. So sometimes you're going to need wisdom on how to handle people, even in church. That's crazy. But it's true. Wisdom. It says, it says, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put devious lips far from you. The first thing you have to understand is that you have to watch your speech. It's the one thing that wisdom helps you do. Wisdom tailors your tongue. It keeps your mouth under restraint because everything that your mouth can say and everything that your mouth does think should not be heard. Let me say that again. Everything that your mouth can say and everything that your mind can think does not have to be heard. You have to watch your speech. We have to be careful how we use our words because now that we have the word of God in our hearts, we can allow bitter and sweet water to come out the same fountain. That's an old, old church text right there. That we can't allow bitter and sweet water to come out the same fountain. Be careful what you're talking about. Better yet, be careful how you talk about it. Because what comes out of your mouth really has settled at the bottom of your heart. This is why this is a heart check. Because the Bible says out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your heart, you talk about. What's damaged your heart, you talk about. What has infiltrated that most sacred part of you, you talk about. And when we come into your, into your presence, what has infiltrated you, what has settled at the bottom of your heart tank, you will bring up and it'll well out of you. And most of us try to cover it up and mask it with good things. But the problem is sweet come out and sometimes bitter come out because what's down in your heart tank is resting in there. I apologize for the one who hurts you. You might never get it from them. But take it from Pastor Torn. I apologize for them because nine times out of ten, they were hurt. They were damaged. Someone mishandled them. And then they did it to you. And now that you've separated from that person or separated from that thing, the bitter residue that's down in your heart is spewing up out of your mouth. You got to be careful what you talk about. The Bible tells us. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, this is the catch part right here. We all know that A part. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We know that Christians been quoting that forever. But the B part you rarely hear. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What does that say? That death and life is in the power of the tongue. But what's down on the inside of you? What comes out of you creates a fruit that you eat of. Your mouth dictates your harvest. My goodness, my goodness. If I was in church, I'd be cutting the rug right now. Because you mean to tell me that what I talk about dictates my harvest. What I talk about, I see. What I talk about, I'll experience. What I talk about, it'll manifest itself. Absolutely. Because the more you talk about good, which the Bible says that these things you ought to be thinking about, the more you talk about the good things that's down in your heart, the more those good things manifest in your life. But if your life has been consumed by bitter, then death and life are in the power of your tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And if you haven't been receiving and eating the things that you consider to be good, maybe it's because you've allowed bitter residue to settle at the bottom of your tank. And if you know anything about a car, if it's dirt at the bottom of your tank, it'll kill your filtering system. It'll, 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 it'll damage your fuel system because what is at the bottom of the tank travels through the body. You got to be careful what's in your heart. Be careful what's in there. Because if that residue is coming out of you, just check your environment. Sometimes people don't want to be around the bitter people. Maybe they don't have enough guts to tell you that you're bitter. Maybe they don't have enough, uh, 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 enough 
uh, gumption were down on the inside of them to say, baby, hey, listen, I don't, I don't want to be around you sometime because you, but that's real talk. That's real talk. And, 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 and most people don't have hard conversations because hard conversations uh, tend to rub people the wrong way initially. But we need to have real talk because maybe you're too bitter to be around. And your conversation tends to send me in another direction. Check yourself. Heart check. Heart check. Are you better? Or are you solid? This text is encouraging us not to use our words in a way that is misleading to others. We have been commissioned to speak the truth to one another, even if it hurts. That has become a dilemma in the body of Christ because it's become easier to smile and clap in agreement than it is to just stand and tell the truth about the issue. Listen, ain't nothing wrong with talking about the issue. It's how we do it. I can tell you something good for you without ripping your heart out. But remember, bitter people, this is the truth, catch these words. Bitter people know what's right. They just don't know how to communicate it. I can tell you something when my heart is pure and you will feel and hear my love. But when I'm bitter, I may know what's right to do. I just don't know how to communicate it to you. And then when, I, when it comes out of me, I do more damage than I do good. Heart check. If can't nobody communicate with you, it might be a residue that you spitting out that people get a feel for. Check yourself. Check yourself. When you speak the truth with a pure intent, then the majority of the time what you say can be received in the right spirit. It's only when the intent isn't pure then the motive is exposed. Look what Ephesians 4 and 25 says. I love this scripture. Look, look what it says. Therefore, rejecting all falsehood, this is the amplified version, amplified to bless your life. Therefore, rejecting all falsehood, whether lying, defrauding, telling half truths, spreading rumors, in as such as these, speak truth with, with each other, one with his neighbor, for we are all parts of one another and we are all parts of the body of Christ. You got to be careful around gossiping folk. Gossiping people will infiltrate you and you will be dealing with someone in a way that they should not be dealt with depending on somebody else's opinion. This is why you got to have a heart check because I don't want to deal with people based off of someone else's perception of them. I got to build my own case. And when you got the right heart, you build your own case. And what I speak to you in love is based upon the case that I built for myself between me and you. It's important to know who your neighbor is. We are obligated to speak the truth with one another. Now, now before I move on to this next point, I want you to catch what I'm about to say right here. Because this right here, bless my life when I read it. It's Luke 6 and 45. I'm going to give you a second to go. I want you to read this one. Luke 6, 45. Okay, I'm going to give you that Jeopardy stone. That do, 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 Okay, 6 and 45. Here it is. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Bring it forth that which is good. Heart check. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart. Bring it forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart. His mouth speak. Oh my goodness. Heart check. Because you have to know what's in your heart. You got to know what's there. You got to know what's in there. It said the good that's buried down inside of you, you can't get around it. You will do what's in your heart. But if the evil, you've been figure out somebody, you've been trying to figure out why this person acts like this, why this person responds this way, 
why they seem to always fly off the handle, why they don't always do the right thing toward people is because what's in their heart and you've been trying to figure out their pattern. Don't figure out the pattern. Recognize the heart. It's the evil. It's the things that's down on the inside that's coming out of them. And sometimes they don't even know because when you haven't been been uh, uh, made privy to the truth, you think your opinion is the truth. So what's down on the heart on the inside of that person is what they're bringing out. And you've been trying to figure out the pattern. Look at that. What what they doing? Why are they doing that? No, but look at the heart. Look at the heart. Look at the heart. It's a heart thing. It's a heart check. It's a heart check. It's what's in your heart that motivates what comes out of your mouth. Out of the evil treasure of the heart. People bring up what's on the inside. There's a benefit to being around people who have a good constitution. They lift with their words and the comfort you with their speech. Then there are those whose treasure is evil. In the Greek it's called poneros. Poneros. And it means to be pressed, harassed, full of peril. They can't help it. Ma'am, sir, they can't help it. They've been pressed, they've been harassed, and it's causing them to have full of peril in their heart. So how they treat you is the result of what happened to them. That's why their heart is broken. It's a heart check. It's a heart check. They've been pressed, harassed, full of peril. My goodness. My goodness. I don't even know if I'm going to get to the other, to the other points I want to make here. Because this speech thing has so much power and weight on us. Look what 1 Peter says, 1 Peter 3 and 10. Let me show you how your life is dictated through your mouth. I don't know, I, I may not even get to the, other, to the other points. I don't even care. Look how this speech thing dictates your life. 1 Peter 3 and 10, whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It says, who would ever love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. How we use our words will determine the quality of the life we live. Now you can't be talking to people crazy and you can't be lying on folk and you can't be gossiping about people and then expect for God to get the most out of your life. No, he said whoever should love life and see good days. It's depending on how you keep your mouth and your lips. You, 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 you want to talk about folk behind their back. You want to you want to make sure setting up pits for people with your conversation. No. How do you expect for God to get the best out of your life? Babe, let me tell you something. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to say that. Well, let's just say it. Ten times out of ten. Jason back there on the camera. Jason, it's ten times out of ten. Somebody then put their mouth on you. Ten times out of ten. That conversation was meant to dig a ditch for you. And because that was meant to dig a ditch for you, there was the intent and the hope that you would stumble into that ditch and never recover. But let me show you how God through the scripture keeps us covered depending on what somebody, when somebody put their mouth on us. Proverbs, two, I'm about to wrap this thing up. Proverbs 26 and 27, I ain't going to know what the points. This is it. Whoever digs a, dit, a pit will fall into it. Let me say it again. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. Whoa, oh, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. The Bible says, whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. Don't, don't, don't worry about if somebody's talking about you. God's got you covered on the back end. 
Because if someone is digging a ditch for you and trying and hoping that you will fall into it, God says, whoever dug the ditch, whoever built the pit, they'll fall in. And if someone trying to roll a stone on top of you, don't you worry about it, baby. I got it. I'll reverse the trajectory and roll the stone back in their direction. God's got you covered. All you have to do is trust and believe that whatever is in God's hand can't be plucked out. Look what Proverbs 13 and 3 says. The one who guards his mouth, thinking before he speaks, protects his life. The one who opens his lips wide and chatters without thinking comes to ruin. Your mouth determines the quality of your life. You better learn how to speak health into your body. You better learn how to speak blessing into your life. You better learn how to cover your household. You better learn how to speak to your spouse. You better learn how to declare for your children because your mouth dictates the quality of your life. The Bible says, if I declare a thing, it shall be established unto thee. So you mean to tell me I can speak out of my mouth and something come to pass for me? Your life, the quality of your life, is dictated by your mouth. I got to fold my arms and just look at you. Give me about two seconds to cut. Look at my eyes. You better be careful what you're talking about. Better yet, you better be careful who you're talking about. Because if you trying to dig a ditch and roll a stone, God will put you in that ditch and put the sand on top of you. Or he'll allow that stone to reverse trajectory and everything that you intended to do for them God will allow to touch you and yours there ain't no threat that's the word I don't know I, I, I had other points I wanted to get to but I, I felt the spirit settle me on that because our mouth is important what you say is important what you speak is important and wisdom in how to use our tongue is important to our destiny. James says that the tongue, it be the smallest part of us, but it's like the rudder to a ship. It, it dictates the direction of that ship. It can even set the woods ablaze. So you got to be careful what comes out of your mouth because if the smallest thing on the ship can dictate its direction how why not can the smallest thing on your body dictate your life oh i repent for the things i done said i, I repent i repent I, re I repent because i know i done said a few things done a few things i done said a few things about some folks pastor Jones, I, don't, I don't listen i tell the truth can't nothing about you judge me I tell the truth, I probably have said some things about some people I shouldn't have said, but listen, I repent right now. And listen, that is a, a, a game changer. That's a navigation reset, repentance. You can repent, repent for your mouth. Because if you've been talking in the wrong direction, it's time to change your navigation setting. It said, whoever would love life, whoever wants to see good days, Keep their tongue from evil and their lips from this deceitful speech. It's evil to talk about someone. It's evil to discredit people. It's evil to gossip. It's evil to dig ditches. It's evil. Today I repent. Hopefully you'll repent with me. I think I just want to go to the Lord in prayer just for a few people. Maybe I caught one, maybe I caught two, I don't know. But I think this speech thing helps us get to the center of God's heart. How we talk should sound like him. How we talk should get us closer to our destiny. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, God. For the ears who heard it, thank you, Lord, for this mouth who spoke it. 
I thank you, God, that minds are being changed right now. And I thank you, hearts are being reset. This is a heart check to help our speech, God. So, Lord, I pray that you give them new thoughts and new things to say. And I pray, God, that you change the direction in their mouth so that, that they can see the good days and have the long life. All these blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, I love you. I had a great time. You know what? I believe that we can't end anything without giving. Right now, there are some numbers going to come across that screen. And they're going to uh, direct you in the places to give. Text to give. You can give online. It doesn't matter what vehicle you use as long as you get it to the place that you're trying to send it to. Maybe you want to connect with us. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Take Action has been blessing your life and you want to say, hey, I want to connect with that ministry. I want to do, I want to see what's going on there. Get more involved. Well, we've got some numbers down there to do that. You can connect with us. We've got some great things going on here. But listen, sow into the kingdom. Sow into the kingdom. Because the Bible tells us that if we sow, if we cast our bread upon the waters, for after a few days it shall return. It also says, whatever man soweth, that he shall also reap. The Bible also tells us that if we give, God will give back to us. Press down. Shaken together into the run over shall men, men give into your bosom. Listen, I enjoyed my time with you. I love you. And like Pastor Keon says, it ain't nothing you can do about it. I connect with you later on, fam. See you later. What an awesome word. And I want you to repack this message. I want you to right now tag some people that weren't on there. I want you to go back and encourage somebody. I want you to subscribe to our YouTube and our Facebook channels, all of our handles and Pastor Keon. I want you to connect this message with somebody that was not connected. Look at the numbers on the screen. You can give by way of Givelify. You can give by way of app. You can drop your mail off uh, at the church. No matter how you give, you can text it. We will receive all of your gifts. The number's on the screen. The hour's far spent. I'm gonna pray us out today. Father and our God, we thank you today, God, for all the viewers who are watching this message. God, even those that are replaying it right now, I ask, kind Father, that you would give them the spirit of balance, that you would bring balance to everything in every area of their life that's out of balance. God, let every word, everything that was spoken over us and in us, God, shall not fall to the ground, but it shall be planted in this season. For this is our season, because we're not going to faint not. We count all of these things done in the master's name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Remember, there's no experience. You said it like the Lighthouse Experience. I'll see you later. What's going on, family? If you're watching this video, you've already decided that you feel my vibe. You already have decided that you like something about the Lighthouse Church. And guess what? We are looking for people to minister to who look just like you, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who believe he is the sustainer and creator of the world. And we use this social media internet platform to spread the gospel all across the world and that includes coming directly into your house. Lighthouse 2.0 is simply a group of people who say, you know what? We either can't make it to the sanctuary or we don't live in the city, but we love the ministry that is coming out of that house. And guess what? We view you as one of our own. So I want you to tag, text, or tweet anybody you know that needs to hear a word from God. Share this thing so that way we can actually be in line with the Great Commission, going ye therefore into all the world, teaching people about Jesus Christ. Lighthouse 2.0, that means that you are a part of our family and you are friends that we have never met, but soon hope we can. Oh, and by the way, can I tell you what I tell all of the people who stand in line? Give me 1% of your trust. I'll earn the other 99. Give me one year of your life and God will change it. God bless you, Lighthouse 2.0. I'll see you hopefully online or in person.